Good afternoon. We are joined by Zoe Mura in your second year as an athletic trainer at San Diego Mesa College. Zoe, thanks for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hey, before we get started and, and talking about your unique and amazing experience over that Dominican Republic, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you came from, where you're originally from, and how you ended up at Mesa. I'm from the Bay Area originally. I came down to San Diego six years ago to go to college at San Diego State. Uh -huh. um, I graduated from the athletic training program at San Diego State uh, May of 2022, and I've been at Mesa since. So this is my second year certified and second year working at Mesa. Oh, so you guys do a phenomenal job. I always say the best training room in the area, um, led by the amazing Tim Fisher um, and also everyone else down there. Tomo, everyone in that in that room is nothing but first class. And uh, I always say this, the success of an athletic program many times hinges on the strength of your athletic department, uh, your your athletic training room. And, uh, you know, the the progression and the results that Mesa produces um, is bar none. Uh, the program is strong. And, uh, you know, a lot of that credit um, has to go through what, what you guys do on a day in, day out basis. Yeah, it's like a team, right? We're one part of a whole system. We have a wonderful athletic director. Our coaches work really closely with us and our athletes are very open and respectful. So we have a good uh, campus culture going around here. Absolutely. Hey, so let's talk about your time with the Dominican Republic. Uh, you were down there with the United USA Beach Volleyball uh, National Team. Tell us, yes. how were you able to participate in that? So I actually was connected with them through my mentor at UCSD, Claire Pointer. Huh? She connected me with USA Volleyball in August or July of 2023 because they were having a national development team program uh, come to Chula Vista and work at the Olympic Training Center. So that was the first time I worked with USA Volleyball and I got to work with them for four to five days with uh, the U19, U21 and U23 national teams, as well as the development camps for those who had not made it onto a team yet. And then making those connections and maintaining those connections got me invited to travel with them to the Dominican Republic for the U23 national team uh, Norseca tournament. Awesome. Hey, I got to ask, what what was the most memorable thing that you saw or did while you were down there at the DR? That's really hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's so much to choose from between um, working with other delegations and getting mm -hmm. to do full evaluations in Spanish mm -hmm. um, and then meeting future Olympians that were coming in after us, as well as the athletes that I was working with. But honestly, I think probably the meddling ceremony yeah. between our four pairs, we got two silvers and a bronze medal. It was really cool to see the athletes get up on the podium and accept their medals and then have a debrief at the end as a delegation and acknowledge everybody on the team and what they were doing. We were super fortunate to travel with a coordinator, a coach for our men's pairs and our women's pairs, as well as a performance analyst, and then myself. So it was really interesting to watch the team kind of grow together throughout the week and then see all the hard work pay off. You know, obviously surrounded by amazing athletes from all over the world. Um, while you were down there, is there anything specific that you, you, you learned or something that you know that you're going to be bringing back with you over at Mesa? Honestly, I think the over communication was the biggest part. We were having kids come from all over the country and mm -hmm. there were some from Southern California, but there were also some from the Pacific Northwest. And obviously right now they were not acclimated acclimated to temperatures in the Dominican sure. Republic where it was 85 to 90 degrees and about 60% humidity. Mm -hmm. So having a plan of action and communicating it multiple times with the athletes to make sure that we didn't run into any issues as far as weather was concerned or heat illness was huge. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously them over communicating back about any injuries they had and then setting up treatment times. So just making sure that you stay on top of it and doing your work early, especially on an international trip like that, where we're not all together all the time. Um, was huge. Something that I'll be bringing back and trying to implement during the semester. Absolutely. Hey, again, surrounded by these these amazing athletes, what's what's one thing you notice about being around them that, uh, in a sense, kind of separates them from the rest? You always hear the phrase talking about uh, the light switch that athletes have, being able to turn it on. Um, I thought it was really interesting. We had all of our meals together as a delegation. Um, watching them eat their meals together and seeing them as 22 year old college students and then flipping that switch the second they get on the courts and being so zoned in and focused to what they were doing in the match that was ahead and watching them prepare with the performance analyst and then work with their coaches was something that was definitely different for me. The court mm -hmm. is the only place they are in that moment. Mm -hmm. Got it. Hey, you know, um, they always say that 
you know, a- any profession, there's always changes. And particularly with, with, with ATCs, sports performance, recovery, training, um, something's, something's always new. Something, there's always something to learn. Um, do you think it's important to continually learn about different methodol- methodology, uh, process, techniques, um, you know, especially in the age today? Absolutely. 100%. As a healthcare profession, we are always evolving. We're always learning new things, right? Um, and I think it's really important to remember that different schools of thoughts have merit and to give them weight while you learn about it. And it's absolutely normal to hone what you're kind of thinking and what you prefer to work with. Mm-hmm. But learning and being open to new information, I think, is huge. Whether it's modalities or just something about your athlete, having those personal relationships and everybody is different. Everybody's body works differently. Everybody's brain mm-hmm. works differently. Being open to that and open to receiving new information and then being able to adapt and grow with that, I think is huge and a very big part of being in a healthcare setting. Absolutely. And uh, just a quick funny story for you. Uh, I was at IMG in 96 mm. at Military's Academy uh, as a tennis player. And uh, at that time, there was this thing that people just started talking about called functional training. And <clears throat> no one really knew what it was back then. But I remember they were letting us do these, at that time, weird uh, process of walking on our back heel, then walking on our tiptoes, and then you know, using a towel to do different rotational things like what is going on here? What is this about? This is the weirdest thing we've ever done to fast forward to today. It's 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 almost well, obviously, depending on the training room and depending on the weight room, it's almost right. the foundation of athletic programs. Right. And so it's yep. interesting to say it's interesting to hear from you about that and how it's constantly just just changing. Hey, I know you talk a little bit about uh, how you got to Mesa. Uh, tell me about your experience. I, I know this is coming to your second year at Mesa College. Uh, tell me your experience there at, at Mount Olympus and also uh, a man that I know is happy right now because the Green Bay Packers advance in the playoffs uh, working with Tim. It's been really wonderful. I started here as a student. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the second year in the program when and then they invited me back to apply for the part time position. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've led football for the past two seasons, which has been really incredible. Um, I think what sets Mesa apart is it's definitely a team oriented environment and a family oriented environment. Uh, we are encouraged to take different opportunities like the USA stuff. I was very fortunate in which all of my coworkers were very supportive of me taking a week to go work for a different company sure. and they all covered my shifts for that week, which is incredible. Um, but knowing that you're not working alone, it's not individualized. Everybody uh-huh. can go to each other for help. And we obviously all have our own strengths. It's really cool to see an environment where we're all willing to cover each other and then obviously provide the best care that we can to our athletes and to our coaches. Uh-huh. Um, and just making sure that we are evolving with them and constant communication. It's been really wonderful working here in the place that I feel very proud to wear the polo or the jacket or, uh-huh. you know. Absolutely. And that's one of those things, again, that it, it, it's it's from the top down, right? You yeah. Have AD, Ryan Shoemaker, that's there, who's also uh, an athlete. And not, not only was he a thrower, but also played basketball as well. So he understands the importance of a strong ATC room, right? Um, yeah. Those are the things that, as, as you've seen, um, the progression of Mesa College Athletics, once Ryan stepped in, in focusing on the things that need to be emphasized, such as, you know, having trainers like yourself there and, and also obviously having guys like Tim around that, um, you know, what I always know about Tim is he leads by example, right? And he's that guy. So it's it's absolutely, it's awesome to see. And it, it's, I've been around Mesa since probably like five, five, six years now. And just to see where it's at now, um, you know, I, I can't stress enough the fact that uh, it, it's always been a team effort. Um, hey, last question for you. Uh, for those that want to follow in your footsteps, uh, what's the one thing uh, that you would recommend for them to do, um, you know, particularly getting to college athletics and eventually uh, moving forward? Uh, what would be your, uh, your your dream job? I think maintaining your contacts is one of the best ways to advance yourself in this profession. And obviously what you do with that is up to you and how you put yourself forward. But staying in touch with mentors from when you were in school, staying in touch with uh, peers, coworkers, um, obviously that's how I got put up for the USA position was through my mentor at UCSD. And this is how I got the job at Mesa was maintaining that connection mm-hmm. with the staff here at Mesa and talking to Tim and Anastasia when she was at the, here at the yeah. time in Tomo. 
Um, as well as saying yes to new opportunities, being open, even if it's not something you think you were going to originally seek out. There's so much to explore, especially within athletic training. We have such a broad scope of practice. Trying new things is always going to, I think, get you where you want to be, whether you like it or not, because it's either going to show you that you like it and that's what you want, or it's going to show you that maybe that's not for you. And then you pivot and change directions. Right. But either way, I think, I think it's all a valuable opportunity to try new things. And then the last thing that I've done for a really long time is always sending a thank you email, whether it's after an interview or after an opportunity like the Dominican Republic trip. Um, just again, reinforcing that connection and making sure you stay pretty solid. Well, Zoe, uh, very informative interview. I, I sincerely appreciate your time. Um, you know, uh, the work that you guys do, uh, does not go unnoticed. You guys are an integral part of this athletic department, the entire program itself. Uh, so once again, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your little story with us. And, uh, I look forward to seeing you on the sideline this year. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.